Uh, good morning. It's the middle of the week, and uh, we're going to see what the Lord does with us today, right? I'm looking forward to my day, and I uh, hope you are as well. And uh, I know I've got lots of friends, though, just have lots of uh, lots of issues going on, right? Life can be hard, and, and it's hard around the world. We know that. Uh, we know there's some difficulties everywhere. It's about choice for me. I just choose to see the upside of life. I believe Romans 8, 28, God causes all things to work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. That means that everything that has been sifted from his hands into my life, deficit or not, God will turn into an asset. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate to what we think, but it, it he will use it for my good. Um, and so I just trust him. I, I say often I've got lots to think about and nothing to worry about because I have a king and Lord who loves me and who's just gracious and who has promised to meet every need that I have. And so with that, I'm well satisfied. Hope your day is too. So, man, let's jump into some truth today. We are, uh, man, this is sobering truth here. Um, and might, might come as a surprise to some of you. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, things people don't normally teach about. This isn't a passage if you're just kind of uh, topically doing things, you would want to jump into this section, but here we find ourselves. And so let's just remind ourselves a little bit about where we are. We're in Luke chapter 10 today. We're going we're gonna to be in 12, chapter 12, chapter 10, verse 12. <clears throat> and uh, so Jesus has sent out his 70. Now remember, he's on the last leg of his ministry. He's now, his heart's already now, heading toward Jerusalem. He's set his face that way, and he's going to go through many towns to get there. He will zigzag back and forth on his way to Jerusalem, but he has set his face toward Jerusalem, and he has said that I am going to give myself over. He's already explained that. <clears throat> he's already explained that to them. So we, we know that that's what's going on. Uh, we have seen the great work that he did. He so he started out in Samaria. I mean, in uh, in Judea, Jerusalem, when he first uh, got baptized, and then we saw that he went through Samaria on his way up to his hometown Nazareth. And so in that in in Samaria, he met the woman at the well. She received the gospel. She told uh, the Samaritan town in which she lived that come and see the one who has who is the Messiah. I found him. And then uh, he went to Nazareth, was kicked out of his hometown, went to Capernaum, kind of began to settle down in there with Peter, James, and John, and, and that kind of region. And he he went all over that that area, uh, proclaiming repentance and the kingdom of God. That that was his goal. And uh, he was amassing a great crowd, but also a great uh, uh, army of enemies, right? And so you see that taking place. So now he's beginning to head south. He's, he... he uh, he called the 12, appointed them as apostles, sent them out. Now, we're, we're six months later, somewhere like that, maybe a little more. He gathered 70 together and he sent them out. That's what we looked at yesterday. And so he, the same kind of a command that he gave to the 12, he's given to the 70. These are uh, the, the 923ers, right? Luke 923. Uh, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Complete humility, deny yourself, just die to self. It's not you, right? Um, willingness to uh, to to die daily, like it's a it's an ongoing battle, and then that you would um, that you would follow him, right? Wherever he leads, you go. So that's that's who they are. So they went out. The seventy did, and they they they're they're coming back. And Jesus inserts this section that he does here. But let's talk about what the 70 did. They went out and they were harvesting humans, right? He said, look into the fields. They're white for heart. They're ripe for harvest. So what does he, what does he mean by that? I mean, these are people who are hungry uh, for truth. There, there's some out there that they're, it's like the, the, the fruit is there. It's just pick it. And so if you will, these are, they're, they're harvesting, um, they're, they're gathering a harvest of hearts of people, right? Uh, those that those that turn their heart toward toward Him, and so they they go out two by two. They're praying for help, right? Pray to the Lord of the harvest that He may send workers into the field. We saw this yesterday. Uh, they are, He says, "You are. I'm sending you as lambs into the wolves." He said, "Looks going to be tough out there. I want you to go. I want you to go reap a harvest." So what is the sickle that they are using to, to do that? It is the truth of the word of God. Share the gospel, the good news. 
So they're going out, uh, praying for other people to come join them in this process. I think that would probably be those who came to Christ out of the, the, the fruit that of that they that they saw in their journey that those would also go out this is how it is it's called the multiplication process and so we go and we share Christ um, they come to Christ then then both of us go and share Christ they come to Christ and all of us share Christ right and that's the method that it takes and he says listen and as you go it's it's a rough world out there um, I'm sending you out as <laughs> lambs among wolves and he says, I want you to listen. I want you to trust me. I want you to trust that I'm going to provide. You don't need to take anything with you. I've got you. All right? So these are, these are, we saw this yesterday as we walked ourselves through this. He says, I want you to, I want you to knock on the door. I want you to offer peace. Now, what that means is I want uh, you, that's the, that's the term for the gospel. I am bringing peace to you. May peace of God rest on your house. Why? Because you fully follow him. So what are they explaining? The gospel of Christ to these to, to these towns. And, and so uh, he's, he's offering the peace of God and he's offering healing to those inside the house. Now, if they hear the gospel and they reject the gospel, you dust your feet off and you go on. <clears throat> he also says it's the same thing with the city. Right? So he sees the home, but he also sees the city. If the city rejects you, dust, dust it off. Uh, they're either in or out. Right? I mean, that's kind of how it went. And he finished by saying this, uh, in verse 11, Even the dust of your city, which clings to your feet, we wipe off and protest against you. He says, you, you go into a city and you preach the gospel. If they receive it, great. If they don't, then you just dust your feet off and pronounce a judgment that's coming on them. This is this is sobering thought because we tend to think that that uh, and and it is a, a lot like that. People hear the gospel the first time and uh, they may not have either understood it. They could have been in a place where they didn't want to receive it, whatever those things were. <clears throat> but there comes a place where you have clearly heard it and you clearly don't want it. You you may act like you do, but by your lifestyle. You, you betray yourself, right? You can't just say, Lord, Lord, and not follow him, right? So you can't just show up on a Sunday deal and think that that means you're something about you that's saved. It, it, is, it is a lifestyle of denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following him. Now, uh, there, there are those who've never even heard the gospel in our world, right? Uh, Francis Chan, uh, a couple of years ago, went to an area in Asia, and he said he walked in. He said they had never heard heard the gospel. He went in with an interpreter, <coughs> never heard the gospel before. So there are those. Now, Jesus then, when they, this is, this is a statement uh, that, 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 the, that Jesus is, is intermitting in between him receiving the 70 back and them being where they are. So just understand, it's kind of a parenthetical here. And he says this in verse 12, I say to you, it will be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than that city. Now, what that let that sink in. It will be more tolerable on that day for Sodom, you know Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Than that city. Which city? That city is the one that he's referring to up front. That if they if they reject you. You go out in the streets, you dust your feet off, and you tell them that uh, that that um, that the kingdom of how of God has come near, and that you have rejected it. Right now, when he says that day, what what day is that? Well, if we um, if we go down just a little further, we read where he says um, in this same thing. Uh, on the day of judgment, verse 14, but it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon, another two wicked cities, in the judgment than for you. So we know what that, um, we know what he says when he says it'll be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than that city. We know that city is the one that rejects him. The people that reject Christ will have a worse time on the day of judgment than Sodom will. <laughs> Wow, <clears throat> just hear that. Sodom <laughs> was obliterated. The city is no more, right? Uh, even those who turned to look back, Lot's wife. You remember the story, right? God sent 
servants, his angels, in there to see if it was as wicked as every as it as it appeared. And as they go in, the homosexual and sexual perversion was so great <clears throat> that they wanted to have sex with these angels, these fresh meat, if you will, that had come into town. And and uh, so that's after they did that, it was proven to be as wicked as they thought it was, a city of perversion and sex and morality. And so God's, God, uh, having had a conversation with Abraham about he would spare the city if they, if they found you know, so many righteous people in it, and they didn't. So he said, tell your Lot to leave. And so <laughs> Lot left. Don't even look back. Judgment's coming. And, and a hailstorm began to hit, and Lot's wife looked back, and she was turned into that pillar of salt, right? You remember that story? This is what's going on there. Now, uh, before we, so, so here's what he's saying. Listen, that wicked city won't have it as bad on Judgment Day as you cities, because why? Because you heard the gospel. You saw the signs of healings and miracles and, and demonic deliverance, and still you reject. Had they seen the signs that you saw, they would have repented. Now, there's several things in here that we want to talk about. One is, <clears throat> Jesus is compassionate. He's the, he's the suffering Savior. He's the Redeemer. That's how he came the first time, right? I did not come to judge the world. I came to save the world. This coming, this one right here, where we see ourselves in the Scriptures, He's not judging anyone. That's why he, that, that's why he said he asked the woman who's caught in adultery, does no one condemn you? And she goes, no, sir. And he says, then neither do I, right? He, 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 he didn't condemn her. He simply said, go and sin no more, right? So there wasn't this, there wasn't this judgment, brimstone and fire when he came the first time. But when he comes again as king, as Lord of Lords, it's going to be a war. He's coming with his heavenly host. He's coming with, with you and me who are believers in Christ. And, 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 and we will, there will be a battle. And there will be a day of judgment. And there will be a separating of the sheep from the goats. And, and there will be those who will be cast into the lake of fire. This is all true. You, you can have a thousand millions of these progressive Christians try to tell you it's not true. And they do it denying the very things that they see in the scriptures and twist them to pervert them. They, they try the same thing with Sodom. They try to say that Sodom's sin wasn't homosexuality, that Sodom's sin was um, was uh, lack of hospitality. Let me just take a minute and kind of walk you through that. Uh, so we know that in Genesis 18, it, it was all about um, it was about their their judgment and their and the wickedness, right? Um, he said, so the Lord said in Genesis 18, the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great and their sin is exceedingly grave. And we know what it was. Jude 7 says, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these angels indulged in what? Sexual perversion and went after strange flesh, that is men with men, women with women, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Now, there are, there are those who say, no, 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 that wasn't their sin. And they would quote Ezekiel chapter 16. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom, Ezekiel says. She and her daughters had arrogance, plenty of food and carefree ease, but did not help the poor and the needy. They go, it's a lack of hospitality and caring for the poor. That was their sin. Except verse 50 says, so they were haughty and committed abominations before me. It's a sexual sin. And this is this is the deal. Now, I realize that the church is coddling sexual sins today, and I'm just telling you, Jesus doesn't. And the church is not speaking for Jesus when they begin to say these things, that sexual perversion is not sexual perversion, it's just love. They're doing they're, they're destroying the gospel, and they too will incur a, a judgment. But I digress. So he demands, this is what he demands. He come, Right now, he's just demanding faith that you believe, that, you're, that, you, that you seek to do the righteous things. That's what the Sermon on the Mount about, what kingdom living looks like, right? And that you come to him in humility. That is repentance, right? So it is repentance. It is, a, it is a change in lifestyle to turn to do those things which please the Lord. And, and it's about faith, trusting in God that he will redeem you. So he's patient, but he's wrath-filled. Now, Hebrews uh, 
chapter 10 speaks of this. He says, you hear the truth, you reject the truth, you continue sinning, there no longer remains a sacrifice. I realize I'm kind of jumping around today. I just want you to hear these truths because this, this needs to be said. Hebrews chapter 10, For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, just as these cities that the 70 went to, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. They came in, they offered a, a redemption, they offered peace of God, they explained that they needed to turn to, from their sins like John the Baptist had cried out, and that they should follow God. But if you want receive it, a terrifying judgment of fury, of fire, which will consume the adversaries, anyone who has ignored the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severe the punishment do you think will be to those who trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant? What's he saying? Hey, man, the Old Testament, it's going to be a lot easier on them than it is you, right? They violated the law of Moses. There was judgment. But how much worse is it going to be on you because you met Messiah? You, you saw the miracles and you rejected. The same is true for us today. We have eyewitnesses of Jesus. We are rejecting Jesus if we don't repent of our sins and embrace the kingdom of God and deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. If we don't hide ourselves underneath the blood, uh, we are doomed. And so this is, this is the message. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to it and just read the text and kind of see how it unfolds. Uh, <clears throat> so it says, I say to you, it will be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that city. Pick a city. He says Corazon, Bethsaida, Capernaum. Those are the three towns that apparently they went to plus others. And he says, woe to you, Corazon. Woe to you, Bethsaida. Woe, woe to you, Capernaum. Why? Because you heard the word. I lived among you in Capernaum. You saw me. You saw me day in and day out. I spoke truth. I didn't hide anything from you. I spoke truth. You saw miracles. You saw healings. You had your, your bellies filled with food. And you still reject me. It's worse for you than it is with Sodom. This is, this is the point of the text. This is what he's saying. Now, now Tyre and Sidon were, were wicked cities too. I won't go into all of that, but they were, uh, they, they were evil cities. They were associated with, um, with greed, wickedness, uh, the devil that's kind of in Lebanon is that area. It's really on the sea. It's kind of in the map right now. It's just north of the Gaza, <clears throat> the Gaza Strip up in that area. And so, so that's what he's talking about. <clears throat> and then he says, listen, um, if and this is something else too, but it will be more tolerable for you for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment, and you Capernaum will not be exalted to heaven, will you? No, you will be brought down to Hades, right? He says it, it will be more tolerable if this is how Matthew describes it. If uh, they had seen the miracles that you saw, they would repent it. I love that. I love the fact that God knows the what ifs of everything. Now. He says, the one who listens to you, listens to me. Understand that. The one who listens to you, listens to me. The one who rejects you, they're, they're not rejecting you. They're, they're rejecting me, he says. And the one who's rejecting me, they're rejecting God most high. Listen, it, this is severe stuff. <clears throat> what are we learning from this? The gospel has consequences. You hear the gospel and it's plain to you and you reject it, expect severe judgment. The other thing we learn is, however hell is and whatever we know about it, it there's something, there, there's, there's movement in there of degrees. It will go worse for some than others. I don't know what that looks like. I do know that if you hear the gospel and you reject it, you die in your sins, it will be worse for you than all of the wickedness that Israel had ever encountered. That's the sobering message today. If you're here and you've heard the gospel and you haven't repented, I'm asking you to do so today. Lord bless you. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the morning.